Last episode of the three. This one's like this feels like the one that actually matters, honestly. Plot wise, yes. Yeah, this is like this is a huge like just thing in comparison. Well, the only really important thing happens right at the end of the episode, but yeah. Well, uh, uh, the lead up is throughout the episode, so never yeah. mind. So this episode, like, effing, yeah, just cuts to the other group. And, like, they just come across a village of Mud Frigimon that just live in these weird little junk houses. And there's a killer motorcycle that terrorizes their village. <laughs> there is a mother effing killer motorcycle. I, I kid you not. <laughs> Let me get the a jump real quick. Effing. Yeah, it is a killer rogue motorcycle <laughs> that just appears. And they're like, oh, I guess we have to deal with this now. <laughs> also, the Digimon Wiki calls the, uh, the motorcycle Behemoth. Yeah, I do remember that, that the motorcycle has a name. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. They don't... They don't call it Behemoth in the episode. They just call it, like, the Iron Beast. But, yeah. Yeah. Man, there's an evil motorcycle that's attacking the village. And, like, effing, yo. Like, Leomon saves it, like, an effing Mud Frigimon kid. How the heck that happens? From getting run over by it. But, like, just rips through the house and takes out, like, the family. And it's like, oh, jeez. Yeah, this thing's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So, like... I do I get into this? Because it's like, yeah, you know, like, the motorcycle runs around, but then just drives off, and you're like, oh, well, that's a thing. And, crap, I actually don't have an image of the mud fridge I'm on. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, well. <laughs> but, yeah, like... The motorcycle's terrorizing this village... But, like, because they saved one of the Mud Frigimon, the others just, like, yo, just come out and they're like, oh, yeah, these are good kids and all. You're, like, one of us now. <laughs> you know, they give them these weird mud balls to eat. They're apparently good. <laughs> Supposedly. Yeah. But yeah, like, the Mud Frigimon... Elder of all things just shows up and he's like, Oh, yeah, like our village keeps being attacked by this evil motorcycle. <laughs> and they're like, uh, Hey, maybe you should, like, yo, like, leave. And they're like, No, nah, we can't. We built this village and it's our home and stuff. And they're like, Oh, well, How's that's that a problem. <laughs> Check Discord real quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, alright, that's a good one. Uh, can I, like... Let's see, how do I do this? Because uh, I'm trying to figure it, out... Or, oh. you, if you open it, you can just kind of drag it onto your desktop and it'll download it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Oh. We're gonna have to like minimize all this bull crap. Okay, so let's just let's close out of this. Da -da -da. It's probably super engaging content right now, by the way. I just figured I'd get a picture of the mud fridge of mine since you didn't have one. Yeah. Uh, can I just like. Oh, I can. Okay, so I just like do a thing real quick. Uh, crap, that's not what I want. This file, okay, yeah, unknown PNG, done. It's way too big, but screw it, it's fine. <laughs> there we go. Just, fit it to... <laughs> just right click fit the screen. Yeah, there's so many of them. There you go. Yeah, there's so like I don't understand how there's mud Frigimon kids. I mean, there's also an old man mud Frigimon. Yeah, it's so confusing. <laughs> Cause like, it is kind of, it, yeah, it is kind of weird to see like, oh, Digimon age, I guess. 
Yeah, because, like, that's definitely something adventure where, like, yo, Wom's like, oh, hey, Palamon, aren't you gonna grow up or something? Or something like that. No, wait, yeah, it's like they go to the real world and they're like, Palamon sees different people and she's just like, oh, are all these people, like, you know, different types of people or whatever? And they're like, no, like, there's different ages. And Palmon's like, oh, people actually grow up? That's odd. Yeah, for Digimon, it's supposed to be more of an evolution thing. Yeah, because, like... They're cause, like, chi- like, baby, child, adult. Yeah. Like, in English, it's like, you know, fresh and trang rookie or whatever. And, like, original, it's like, you know... Like, baby, like, effing child level is rookie, then, like, champion's adult, and then it's, like, perfect and ultimate, or, like, you know, ultimate and mega. Which is kind of confusing, but, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. Because it's, like, when you hit ultimate, it's, like, you know, yeah, you've, like, you've perfected yourself, and you've, like, you know, reached your, like, true form or whatever, and when you hit Mega, it's like, oh, you're even beyond that. You're your ultimate. Yeah, and then some <laughs> Digimon have an Ultra form. I get the feeling that's like, well, I know that it's like, yo, Mega form as a stage was created after the original games, so that makes sense. And yeah. Ultra was created like after they made Mega forms. <laughs> Yeah, Ultra is stuff like Apocalymon, and, like, I think Bealsmon Blast Mode might count. Uh, is Apocalymon Ultra, or is he Mega? Uh, the thing that the Aboromon turns into? That's Armageddon. Armageddon. Armageddon's what I mean. Yeah, like, Ultras are, like, super rare. There's only, like, you know, like, well, like, a set number of them. Like, that's, like, 12 or 20 or something like which seems like a lot but it's like yo like because there's like a million digimon that's like you know it's like it's stuff like omnimon basically right yeah you have to go above and beyond normal evolutionary methods to hit ultra yeah you have to like get into fusions or like other weirdo crap <laughs> Like, generally it's, like, fusions, like, for the most part, honestly. Like, fusions and, like, you know, weird other forms. Yeah, Armageddon fuses out of, like, billions of its baby (laughs) form. (laughs) Yeah. It's probably, like, the most normal way it happens, honestly, for, like, Armageddon. Because it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, give me just a second. I gotta use the bathroom real quick. All right. Please, right back. Yeah, it's off the top of my head. It's like, I think it's like Lucimon Dragon Mode or whatever is like Ultra. There's like that, there's Omnimon, there's like Chaos Mon, which is like another fusion like Omnimon and like his variants. And there's like Imperial Dramon Paladin Mode, which is weirdly like Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode fused with effing Omnimon, so that's still the same rank, I guess. Like Millennium Mon bullcrap because of course Millennium Mon has like a million different forms and they all evolve from each other and it's insane. Effing like what else is there? It's like Armageddon Mon. That's one. Effing. Uh, there's the burst modes for Shine Greymon and Mirage Greg Mirage Galgamon. Yeah, those burst modes are like ultra. Effing. Gallantmon Crimson Mode, which is, I think is like a fusion of like him and a different thing or something. Beelzemon Burst Mode, which is like, you know, its own thing. I, I forget exactly how it happens. I think he gets like a toy gun or something, and that somehow leads him to like becoming an Ultra. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. That just kind of hit yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like Suzanomon, who's like the big fusion of like all the spirits in like Frontier, which is like a whole other thing. Uh, yes, it's... the part of Frontier that makes it less interesting. <laughs> the part where, like, every single character's, like, just Digimon forms just fuse together with every other Digimon form they've obtained. And it just becomes a big, crazy, like, 
just night dude that just shoots a big cannon sword. Yeah, and then he's the only form that they ever fight with, so the other kids don't matter anymore. But we'll get to that yeah. eventually. I, I think what you're referring to more is like Emperor Greymon and like effing was it like Mirage no, Gurumon or no Magna Gurumon. No, I'm no I'm talking about Suzanuomon. Right, because I feel like more people talk about that. They talk about, like, yo, oh, yeah, like, Emperor Greymon just takes half the spirits and Magna Groomon takes the other half. So only the main two characters are doing stuff for, like, an entire arc. I mean, yeah, sure, but Susano Oman is the ultimate, like, okay, everybody's one being now, except it's still the two main characters fused into one. Yeah, I still don't get why they did just pull a Gurren Lagann and just have, like, all the characters in there at once. Yeah. Because, like, that's how you make it fun. <laughs> or just give everybody a big cool form. Just, like, have a moment where, like, every character gets to do their own special move as Suzano Mon. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, Digimon, well, we'll get to Frontier. Like, I feel like, weirdly enough, Frontier's where they introduce, like, a lot of the bigger lore and stuff, isn't it? I... maybe, kinda... Because I remember that's where they introduced, like, all the stuff about, it's like, oh, the three, like, Celestial Angel Digimon, like, you know, Lucymon, Fall Down Mode, and, like, all this other stuff, you know? Yeah, we get kind of, like, a hierarchy thing, and, like, how the, the higher-up, like, how everything there, there works. Yeah, because Adventure, it's like, you know, oh, hey, who's the big bat? Oh, it's just a group of Megas. Okay. <laughs> Do they have any significance? No, it's it's just an evil clown. All right, got it. And yeah, the frontier pretty much. Uh, well, Tamers kind of brings up the the beginnings of oh, there is a there is a hierarchy in the digital world. Yeah, I I was say like O two is where it first really comes up because like you know you get the like where they're called I. I almost say they're like the Sonin, because that's Naruto. But it's like the three, like, great Digimon or something, or like the four or something, because they're based on different temples. And you get, like, a Zoologmon, oh, and that's, like, a yeah. big recurring thing. Yeah, pretty much, Zero Two sets up what Tamers is going for. Yeah, Zero Two, like, sets up. I'm pretty sure this is the series that, like, you know kind of cements it and makes it, like, a bigger deal, because it's like, oh, hey, these big forces are actually coming back, and they matter for a bit. Yeah. yeah it's, it's probably not, like, a huge spoiler to say that it's like, oh, yeah, like, love the, like, the effing, like, god, the, like, effing Davis are worshipping or whatever, like, this bird we keep seeing is, like, one of the sacred beasts or whatever. Well, yeah, like, the I, four temple Digimon, whatever they're called. Yeah, I mean, like, spoilers for however old the series is. <clears throat> and I feel like that's not, like, too big of a spoiler, because it's like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. It's like, uh, you think that for a second, it's like, okay, yeah, no wonder they, like, give people evolution power, because that's a thing that was established. Speaking of which, we find Ipmon wandering in a random white abyss. Yeah, so I'll point out, Ipmon is not in the desert. Hello? I'm still here. Okay, yeah, it's not like you want to wear something. Oh, but yeah, no, Ipmon's... trying to lead us back into the discussion. Yeah, Emod's not, like, in a desert. He's in a weird, misty area with, like, stone steps under him. Yeah. And he runs into a mysterious Digimon. That it's like, is the... It's uh, the dog, Deva. Yeah, it's just a big metal armored dog. And I, I kind of like the way he looks, honestly. <laughs> he looks like one of those uh, statues. Yeah, like he has a, a very weird design to it because its eyes are like massive, but kind of works. Yeah, 
Uh, he, he, Mon thinks he's a statue at first because he's just sitting there staring and not moving. Yeah. And he's just straight up like, oh, hey, like, you know, join us and worship our god and we'll give you more power. And then Mon's hey. like, ah, how do I trust you? He's like, yo, just do it. He's like, yo, you still care for those tamers, don't you? And, like, he shows Mon, like, a vision of, like, the kids that used to be his, like, original tamers. And Mon's <clears throat> like, oh, hey, you guys. And they, like, run off without him and they get a puppy. Yeah. yeah it's worth noting that they don't run past him. They run through him because it's, like, yeah. an illusion from his memories. Yeah. Like, I assume this has to be, like, yo, what's going on in the real world right now, right? Uh... I don't know. Because, like, they run through him, and they get a puppy, and they immediately start stretching it, like, the same way they're pulling on him, so they've yeah, learned they nothing. Yeah, they start fighting over it. But yeah, it's like they lost their Digimon pet, so now they're getting another pet to replace him. It could be a vision of the real world, or it could just be the uh, this Digimon showing him on something that'll make, like push him over the edge. Yeah. So it's like, it's this little thing of like, oh yeah, yo, like, he ran away because they, like, hurt him by accident, but he really does kind of care. And Amon's like, yo, just kind of think it. He's like, no, but, like, out and wall, like, yo, just screw people or whatever. He's like, just kind of thinking back to, like, yo, like, his time with the other, like, yo, kids and, like, yo, the time Gilmon gave him bread and, yo, all the, like, fun they had and it mon's like ah but he's like no he's like screw it. he's like give me power i need power <laughs> yeah he's like if i have to take down those kids then sure give it to me yeah because that's the thing it's like the dog's like oh yeah like make a contract and i'll give you power and he's like oh you mean he's like yeah they're like the way specifically it describes is like there are quote unquote corrupted Digimon out there who are like destroying the Deva and not even having the decency to load them. And it's like, oh, well when you put it like that Uh But yeah, I love this moment where Amon's just like, no, power though. Because it's just so well done. And he makes a... Pretty much a deal with the devil. Yeah. And he falls into a lava pit. It's like, I really like that it's like, yo... Like, it starts off like the emotional, like, yo, theme. Like, the harmonica going and stuff. Like, oh, he's remembering his past. And it looks like he's gonna stand up for the kids. And he just clenches his fist and he's like, no. I will be stronger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's like just opens a portal below him just drops him into this weird like red goop and you see like the image of like you know the bird in the background that was there in the previous episode where like the monkey ran off to the digital world yeah. that's a L sentence let's, let's let's be real it's him on falling into hell after making a contract with the devil yeah pretty much and then he's literally reborn as, like, a fallen angel. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, this this is kind of jumping ahead a bit, because, like, we're not supposed to know this yet, but it's kind of obvious that it's, like, Imon comes back as, like, a new Digimon called Beelzemon, who's, like, a mega level. Yeah. Uh, this is, this, this all happens in, like, cut in between everything else happening with the the motorcycle but yeah. i figured it may, it'd make more sense to get this out of the way first yeah so back with the motorcycle it's like yo like to Kyle's like oh hey we should stop it and then henry's like well no may we should just leave this place to deal with its own problems because you know we don't really belong here <laughs> and to Kyle just like the motorcycle reappears anyways, and they just start firing it because, you know, they're not just going to leave it alone. Yeah. 
Gamon's just like, I got this, and he jumps on the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't get this up because like Gilmon just jumps get on a the shot effing red-eyed Gilmon. Yeah, he jumps on the motorcycle and like it takes control of him. <laughs> and like you see this little baby Digimon just falls off, and they're like, "Hey, what's this thing?" And he's like, "Oh, thank goodness that bike took over my consciousness and was controlling me." Yeah, and they're then just. We Evil Guillemon riding a motorcycle. <laughs> Shooting like epic fireballs as he drives by people. <laughs> and then uh, and they're like, oh, how, how are we going to defeat it if somebody has to take his place? And like, they're talking about some kind of like fairy tale or something. Yeah, they, uh, they mentioned the story of like the red shoes or something. It's like, oh yeah, you pawn the shoes and you just dance until you die. And they're like, okay, well, how do we stop it? It's like, ah, no, it's it's a bad story. You die. And then Leomon's just like, oh, okay, I got this. And he jumps up and it looks like he's about to like, cut Guillemot in half and he turns the blade on, uh, door it flat, <laughs> smacks him on the head and knocks him out and it's yeah. like well it takes over the consciousness so we just have to make him unconscious yeah sound logic surprisingly easy to do and like as the bike just kind of drifts off like you see like a hole just open in the ground <laughs> and like effing like the bike falls in the hole and Beelzebub just bursts out of the hole on the bike. <laughs> and he's like, everyone's like, oh, what the heck is that guy? And he just rides off while in, like, complete control of it. <laughs> yeah. And then, he, and then he, and then the final line of the episode is, my name is Beelzebub. Or Beelzebub. But. Yeah, I, I like Beelzebub better. <laughs> yeah. Like, Biel's Beaumont probably works better in Japanese, but it just doesn't flow in English. Yeah. But yeah, like, Itmon has turned into a crazy biker Digimon with a metal tail that rides an effing possessing, like, evil demon motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, Beelzebub's strong enough to, uh, tame the motorcycle so it can't control him. Yeah, pretty much instantly, too, like, as soon as he comes out, it's just under his control. It's like, th this is his motorcycle now. <laughs> it's like, it makes so much sense, too, because it's like, I feel like we have seen this type of thing before, where it's like, oh, like, effects, like, like, control your whatever just don't work if you're strong enough. Yeah. So it's like uh, it's it's such a cool episode. <laughs> it's a cool introduction to Beelzebub. Yeah. And hey, guess what? In the opening, he's not shattered out anymore. It just shows him. Oh, I miss that. I, like I skipped the opening. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, uh, on the episode where they reveal Beelzebub, like, it's kind of annoying because it shows, like, for anybody who, uh, like, might be watching it for the first time, it shows them in the opening before you see Beelzebub for the first time, so it's yeah. like, I don't know, I guess it can be kind of like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I guess. But it is kind of like, oh, why, why in the, uh, whatever. Yeah, like, I... You won't be surprised by the new form, right? Because, of course. So it's like, if it's a shadow or something, then that's cool because you can, like, speculate on it. But if it just shows the thing, then it's like, eh, alright. I guess it's that, then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is, like, this is, like, a good, like place for like a good development for Mon's arc I think yeah cause like by the time you get here it's like yo like I kinda wasn't digging his whole like antic for a bit like you know a little after he was introduced but like he really just kinda became like a good character on his own 
Because it's like, you know, you get it, right? Like, you understand, like, what drives him and what motivates him. And, you know, there's this, like, this character conflict. So when, like, actually comes down to this, he actually just goes for it. And, like, it makes sense. Yeah. All he's ever wanted is power, and so he's gotten it. Yeah, like, and, you know, like, it's just such a good subversion. Because you're like, you know... You'd think that, like, him going against the Davas would be, like, you know, the climax of his arc or something. And, you know, he'd have to, like, you know, like, find the kids and join up and maybe then he could evolve or something. Or, like, you know. Because, like, you think about it for a second, it's like, Kenta and Kazu still don't have Digimon partners. So, like, Imon could have easily become one of their partners and, like, you know... They could have had a big thing with that. Yeah, but instead he, we're going... Uh, basically, he's the villain of this arc. Yeah, he becomes the Frieza, and that's way more interesting, I think. Because <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, like it's it's not quite like, oh, the guy who's just like a jerk just got what I want. It's like, you know, there's a character conflict there. And, you know, he had to, like, actively, like, go against these people he cares about to, like, get this. Yeah, and hey, guess what? He's really strong. <laughs> yeah, so Emma at this point is a mega level. And that's stronger than anything we've seen in Tamers so far. <laughs> like, the Davis of, like, they could probably reappear every now and then as, like, a threat. But they've essentially been, like, outclassed. This is the new big thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... We're not gonna see... Uh, I don't know when we start seeing them actually butt heads with Beelzebun, but... Uh, not for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I imagine it's, like... Imon is probably just gonna wreck them. Cause like that he's just evolved. They like they made him too strong. Yeah. Well he's a mega. Yeah, he had too much potential. He's a mega and the kid's uh highest form at this point is ultimate. <laughs> but yeah. Good episode, basically. I yeah, just really yeah. like how this like progression was handled. I like the episode a lot. I'm also biased, but hey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it, like, Beelzebon is a cool digital. Like, I feel like there's no doubting that, right? Like, I don't think there's anyone who's gonna look at this design of, like, yo, this super edgy, like, demon biker man <laughs> with, like, effing guns and be like, oh, hey, that's lame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it's silly. <laughs> Beelzebub's so cool. He's so cool, though. <laughs> he's he's so cool until they redo his design and then they kind of ruin it. What do you mean? He's super cool and then his design changes later and it's even cooler. I'm talking about, like, after Tamers. <laughs> Oh, the uh, Cross Wars version? Yeah, where they like they add whites into his color palette and it just doesn't work at all. Yeah. Cause like the whole thing is that it's like you know his hair and like his you know crazy like white fur trim and stuff contrasts like yo, know, his big black like crazy biker outfit. Yeah, he, he loses he loses like all like almost all of the black in his design and it's like why would you do that? Yeah, it's it's such a downgrade. <laughs> so yeah, like I I guess any last thoughts? I don't really have anything. Feels about so cool though. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, I guess you guys are out.